It is estimated that over 9 million people throughout the UK drink more than the recommended daily limits. According to the NHS, there were almost 7,000 deaths which were related to the consumption of alcohol in 2014. And now with alcohol prices over 60% cheaper than they were 30 years ago, alcohol has become a prevalent aspect of today's society. Drinking has always been a socially accepted pastime in the UK, but does that mean in today's society alcoholism is hidden? Does drinking more correlate to a better social life? And is there stigma towards alcoholism? And is there a way to treat it? I want to find out more. It is estimated that the lives of five other people will be affected when a person becomes dependent on alcohol. I am one of those. While I was growing up, I had a family member that became addicted to alcohol. Though they have now sought help and are sober, the impact of this still has an effect on me. Last year, due to health reasons, I had to give up drinking alcohol for a short period of time. At first, I thought this would have a negative effect on my social life. However, I found that even after not drinking for only a short period of time, I not only felt physically better, but mentally too. My friends were supportive of me and I found I actually enjoyed myself more when we went out. So I decided to abstain from drinking alcohol indefinitely. It's not always so easy to stop drinking or even cut down. So today I've come to talk to Steve to talk about his experience with addiction. Well, I'm now 59 years of age and I've been in recovery for just over four years. It's one of the, one of the aspects of alcoholism is that it has an effect on your memory, which means that large parts of my life I can't recollect. But ironically enough, the first drink that I ever had, I can remember as if it was yesterday. And my parents took me to a pub on a Sunday lunchtime called the Dog and Fox on Wimbledon Common and I had half a pint of beer. And my memory of that was, it was the most disgusting thing that I'd ever, I'd ever tasted. And with hindsight, I think then that my thought was that this is what adults do. And if I'm to become an adult, I'm gonna to have to, to learn how to drink. When did you first realise that you had a problem with alcohol? The thing about um, alcoholism is it's a, it's a very progressive thing and it happens very slowly over a long period of time. And as such, uh, I really didn't notice um, the extent or the amount that I drank gradually crept up over the years and it all seemed just perfectly normal. Um, and it's a, it's, a difficult, it's a difficult subject for, for people to talk about. Um, a lot of alcoholics go through a long period of denial, um, not aware that they've got a problem, telling themselves that they haven't got a problem. And you know, I was guilty of that myself. Unfortunately, it had progressed to the point where it wasn't just social drinking anymore. And for the first time ever, I thought there's a possibility that I could be an alcoholic. What compelled you to drink? I sort of basically understood that once I started to drink that I was unable to stop. And it's been described to me in recovery that this is um, part of an illness and the compulsion comes from once I put alcohol into my system, it triggers something in my mind which then I can't stop myself drinking. How did drinking make you feel emotionally? I suppose of the, the alcohol on my mind was to dull all of my emotions. I found towards the end of my drinking that I was quite emotionless. You become, you become very isolated as an alcoholic uh, in as much as you don't, you don't want other people to see the way that you, you drink. You tend, to, for me, the case was that I, I drank at home alone. Do you think that there is enough talk about alcoholism in society? Absolutely not. It seems to be um, a subject which is perhaps, perhaps not brushed under the carpet, but it's certainly not talked about enough. Does today's society know enough about the signs and effects of alcoholism? Is there significant information out there on the topic? 
I'm on my way to talk to John Alford, who gives talks across the country about the dangers of excessive drinking. Can you tell me a bit about your job and what it entails? OK, so I deliver training to drug and alcohol treatment centres and I also also write manuals uh, to the, the, the staff in these places use to deliver drug and alcohol treatment programmes. Can you tell me a bit about the disease of alcoholism and how it affects a person? Current research says that up until about the age of 21, maybe 22, our brains are still developing. So when people under that age go out and they drink heavily and we've got a binge drinking culture, we're changing the way our brain functions and possibly changing it for life. So the reward pathways and centres in our brains are affected heavily when we binge drink under about that sort of age. And that might have a knock-on effect for life. And some of the research says that that actually sets people up for addiction later on in their life. So we've got this huge British culture of hitting it hard at weekends. And you only need to go to the inner cities and things like that to see people absolutely smashed out of their heads on booze. And it's very cultural and it's very accepted. But it's very, very dangerous. Alcohol affects people in all sorts of ways. Um, one, of the, one of the most recent um, bits of research to come out is the effect of alcohol and cancer. And we don't often talk about it much in this country. We're a bit scared to talk about alcohol is one of the prime causes of seven of the major cancers. Um, for instance, breast cancer um, and all, all sorts of things like that. So there's a massive link between alcohol and cancer. What would you suggest to a person if they thought they had a drinking problem? Lots of people don't realise that to withdraw from alcohol is probably the most dangerous drug to withdraw from. So people often get scared about heroin and all of those sorts of withdrawals. But once, once you have developed an alcohol problem, withdrawing from alcohol can be very, very, very dangerous and kill people. So the first thing I would suggest is, is you've got to get honest about how much alcohol you drink. Um, and then I would suggest go and see your GP. So you've got to talk about it, you've got to talk to people about it and try and find out um, where you can go, what you can do. Now, there's all sorts of places that you can get in touch with that can help you from anonymous places to local services. I mean, in my experience, people trying to deal with an alcohol problem on their own in isolation doesn't really work. You need help, you need to talk to people, you need to, to reach out. Alcohol is a known cause of seven of the major cancers, including mouth, throat, voice box, liver and breast cancer. According to the American Cancer Society, the higher consumption of alcohol, the higher the risk of any of these cancers. As drinking is a highly popular social activity, it is quite often difficult to identify if you have a drinking problem. Some of the signs include feeling ashamed about your drinking habits, lying about or hiding your drinking habits, needing to drink in order to feel better or in order to de-stress, blacking out while drinking and being unable to remember what you did. I'm on my way to talk to a man named Trevor who knows firsthand how serious and tragic the consequences of excessive drinking can be. To respect his privacy, Trevor has asked me not to show his face during the interview. To me, it's some very dark places over a consistent number of years. And uh, if you start, I think my journey is best described as one of, um, when I picked up a drink, I picked up a lifestyle that I didn't think was possible which involved plenty of police stations, plenty of magistrates' courts and the inevitable Crown Courts, till inevitably, you know, sort of, if you just go real long story short, uh, what, when I look over my, my period of, of how I drank and the stuff that happened, um, every time I was going to prison, it was getting a little bit worse until finally uh, I woke up in the police station to find out I killed my partner. So, now that's something I thought would never happen to me, you know. But uh, 
this stuff, you don't know where it takes you. You really don't. And, uh, you know, the thing about blacking out with alcoholism and the, effect and the consequences of blacking out is a lot of the time, if you haven't been to the pub, because that's where it always started, uh, although in saying that towards the end, it was from the side of my bed, the special brew, uh, because I had the jitters. But um, then going to the pub and uh, the barman sort of saying to me, well, you were right so-and-so last night. Uh, um, just looking at him blankly as if saying, what the hell are you on about, you know? But you get the other side of the coin because everyone was laughing and joking about it and no one seemed to got hurt. I didn't take no notice of it, you know? But then you wake up out of that blackout and you get told that uh, by a policeman that they're investigating the death of your girlfriend. And it's a real big shock. It, 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 it dropped me right bang on my backside uh, because finally somebody got hurt. And the thing is, you can't turn back time. Uh, when it's all that laughing and joking about and no one's getting hurt, you just go with life and you just laugh. And then suddenly some, there's a life gone. Talking to Steve, John and Trevor has really shown me how dangerous alcoholism can be. If you feel that you have a problem with alcoholism, then there are many places you can turn to, by asking a local GP or a helpline or even going to a meeting. Just don't be afraid to ask for help.